Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, Northlight Images, and I'm going to address an issue in this video. PPI, DPI, what do they mean? Are they the same? When should you use one? When should you use the other? The reason I do it is because this is a subject I've covered in quite a lot of videos and articles, but they tend to be related to particular printers or something like that. So I have got, and I would emphasize this this time, an article that goes into this topic in detail. It's also been looked over several times, refined, the text has been fine-tuned to try and make it as clear as possible. Uh, when I shoot my videos, I'm using a rough outline script. I don't script things accurately. And that's why I will say, check the articles if you're unsure of something you see in the videos, because the articles are always the definitive source. Dots, pixels, are they the same thing? Yes or no? Um, well, pixels. That's the smallest subdivision of an image, really. Um, you could think of this, and this is a monitor, this is a printer paper profiling target. You could think of each of these colored blocks as an individual pixel. Of course, they're huge and you can see them. That's far too big pixels. You don't want pixels that big when you print, so you use smaller. So that's higher pixels per inch equals smaller pixels. Dots usually indicates ink dots or sometimes um, parts of a screen, you know, actual colored elements of a screen. Uh, there's an example showing uh, a photograph of a print showing the actual dots of ink. Now I'll come back to DPI and dots in a bit, but pixels per inch is the first thing. If I think of a particular image, it has no dimensions. An image that I take with a digital camera or from any other source like that has pixels in it. The bigger those pixels, the bigger the print will be. So images themselves do not have a natural dimension. And this is something somebody asked me the other day. They said, well, when I convert my files, they have a standard PPI, pixels per inch, with them. And I, I say per inch, it can be per centimetre as well if you want to, uh, but inch is still common in this, in this area. So the images themselves, they have no natural size. So when I processed images from one of my older Canon cameras, the default was 240 pixels per inch. Now, 240 per inch might or might not be good enough for printing, but that doesn't matter. That 240 is not an inherent feature of the image. The image itself just has pixels. It has no physical dimension until you actually reproduce it in a way. So the image itself has no real PPI setting. There are PPI settings that you use for printing, for showing, for conversion and things. But if you take the same image and you print it at half the number of pixels per inch, then the image is twice the size linearly, so larger area, but linearly twice the size. Um, where do these numbers come from? Well, they're fairly arbitrary, uh, most of them, and they are partly, if you're looking at printing, pixels per inch is to do with how much detail we can resolve. So pixels per inch, you might need 280, 300, 360 pixels per inch to get an image on a print which you cannot easily see the individual pixels. But that's at normal viewing distances. If I take an image from a camera, even say a 10 megapixel camera, and print it at billboard size, I might print it at eight, 10 pixels per inch. That means it's gonna be huge. I did say it's billboard size. So you've got this, uh, you go up to it and it will look, the detail, not quite as coarse as this, but the detail will be like this. But then again, I said it was a billboard image. Who goes up to billboards and looks at them this close? You don't. They're designed for viewing further back. And that's why, in fact, pixels per inch numbers um, are perhaps more useful when you're looking, making smaller prints, because we tend to look at the smaller prints closer. So the larger the print, the further away you view it, so you can get away with lower pixel per inch numbers. And as I say, have a look at the article I've got for this, because the article looks at the 
differences between these things, the explanation of the numbers, and why you might choose some numbers for a printer in different uses and different types of prints. But really, the difference between them is that pixels have no inherent dimension until you decide you want one. So you end up with this you know, image, you're going to you process your image and you get it at a certain number of pixels per inch. Well, that tells you what the size is. If you want a bigger image, you can reduce the number of pixels per inch and get a bigger image and you'll get a bigger print. Up to that point where I said the detail may become too, too coarse and may be visible. For these prints here, these are printed, oh, I don't know, they could be at 280, they could be 500, they could be anything really. At this distance, they don't really need to be anything over about 250. Now, these particular images, if I'm going to look at them closer, I will see, certainly if I put my glasses on and look at them closer, I'm going to see detail in it. And I may decide there's not enough detail. That's where more megapixels come in. More megapixels let you use higher pixel per inch settings when you make your prints. Talking of pixel per inch settings, and this is one of the reasons why I did these, the, the series of articles, you may see numbers like 300 ppi, 360, 720, 1200, various numbers you may see in printer dialogues and settings. And some people say that there are certain numbers that if you set your pixels per inch at a certain number, then your prints will be better because they are the native resolutions of the printer. Well, that might have been true 15 years ago. It really isn't true today. And I've got lots of actual experiments that show that setting your prints to an arbitrary number such as 360 um, really doesn't gain you much. And essentially, the more real resolution you have in your image you can send to the printer, the better your prints will look. So if I've got an image that naturally at the size I want to print it comes out at, let's say, 435 pixels per inch, then I'll send it at 435 pixels per inch. Remember that pixel per inch is setting the size of the print. That's what I'm sizing. So I'm allowing for the size of the paper, any borders if I want them, and that's why I set it. That's why if I'm resizing images, I may need to interpolate, I may need to change those numbers. But in general, the more you've got, the better. Uh, doesn't mean you can't print with low megapixel images. I've got some great prints done that way. But more megapixels really help in that respect. So back to that PPI number. Sometimes when I get inquiries from clients, um, I, and I do architectural industrial photography, and I'll say, yeah, they're telling me what sort of pictures they want, what sort of stuff they want photographing. And I'll say, how big do you want the photos? And if somebody answers me, oh, just send them at 300 PPI, or even if they say DPI, but if they say 300 PPI and I go, but how big? And if they sound unsure of what I mean, then I know that they probably don't understand the, what 300 PPI really means. And it's just something they've been told to say. Uh, that's very important if you're a photographer doing work to understand your client's level of knowledge. Uh, there's no good assuming too much knowledge for it because if something goes wrong, you, the photographer, will get the blame. Um, I've had this happen. This is why I'm always very careful in getting specifications and guides from people when I'm doing work for them. But anyway, so that's pixels per inch. Back to dots, ink dots. Um, now, to make up, I said this was like giant pixels. To make up each one of these little colored squares here takes lots of dots per of ink. Now the dots per inch is the density of the dots of ink sprayed on the paper. So dots per inch, to make one pixel, you need lots of dots of ink. Because if you want to have a range of colours, you're going to need to mix them. And this example here, this is a shot, this is a detail so from, a, from a picture here. But this, this detail here, they are little dots of ink. The printer, the printer driver, decide how to arrange those dots to give you the impression of colour. Now the dots are at a much finer pitch than the pixels. That's why when you see printer settings, you'll see 
printer settings such as you'll see 360 720 of those or 600 300 different printer makers have different numbers of it you may see 1200 1440 2880 you may even see 4800 over 5000 that tells you how many little dots of ink are being put down per inch the higher that number the finer the gradations remember this is nothing to do with pixel size that's purely the resolution this is the dots of ink on the screen there so that's doing that that's go putting down dots of ink you might think well I'll just go for as many as possible that's using effectively on your printers the very highest quality settings the highest things all that often does is use a bit more ink and it prints slower um, there's often an acceptable level of quality comes at a lower setting. So for printers like the P5300 that I'm testing at the moment, which is the newer version of this, the P5000 down here, that I'm printing at 1440 dots per inch. What pixels per inch am I printing? It doesn't really matter when I'm printing targets like this. I'm printing whatever is needed, whatever gives me enough detail. So pixels per inch is the detail you see of the pixels of the image. Dots per inch is a bigger number because that's all the little dots of ink that have to go in to make it up. Um, I'm aware having done this that uh, you know, this is one of those things that you may need to go through several times please do have a look at the article for it. Um, it is much easier. It's why I will say I'm, you know, I'm a photographer first, a writer second, and video making comes quite a way down the list, um, or somewhere around my sort of piano playing and cooking abilities. But um, if you want the details, that's where to have a look. But if you've got any questions, let me know. Um, but just be careful when you use terms and when you see other people using terms like DPI, PPI, do they actually know what they mean? Because these get used, sometimes DPI, PPI get used interchangeably, um, whereas technically people should be using one or the other. Now, I hope that's <laughs> added a bit of clarity to things, but I say, please do ask questions. It's people's questions that sort of give me the ideas for the videos anyway thanks for watching please do subscribe to the channel got lots of stuff coming up this year and uh, bye